Yo, 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 what's good? It's Chairman House of Barf. Sitting here, just thinking of a few things. Um, essentially, uh, discuss getting the written budget. I'm not, I mean, I'm not done with it. Essentially, just something real basic. Uh, it's not, you know, to the extent, but it's a lot better than what <laughs> I haven't even completely went through it. And, you know, seeing where my money's going and how much I'm spending. And um, if I had to guess just miscellaneously, especially since being um, estranged, let's go like a hundred a day for, whew, let's go four months. So that's that 30, 60, 91, 20, a hundred a day times 120, probably like in the last four months, probably like probably a little bit more than that probably more like 15 so and i haven't even broke it down technically you know what i'm saying i just kind of threw it together working on it need to break it down some more because there's still some things that i'm hiding under the rug under the couch that i don't want to see you know like even in the miscellaneous expenses how much of that went to things like you know alcohol you know, things like that, you know, um, so I, I haven't even wanted to break that down, you know, um, uh, food from restaurants, haven't even broke it down yet, kind of broken down, you know, miscellaneous expenses, how to, you know, groceries, I haven't even, I don't even think I put groceries and stuff like that down yet, so working on that, coming up with that, currently unemployed, currently no support, uh, from, a strange partner, nothing. Government assistance uh, hasn't even started. Uh, need to get working on that. Because um, I think you can get government assistance for things like utilities and whatnot. Um, especially, I don't have any income. And, you know, just lost my partner. So, uh, thinking of different things to get into to... Um, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, oh yeah, to get into, to see how I'm going to take care of this. So one, government assistance. Look at there's ways that, um, I can supplement some income from the government for a little while. Uh, there's no shame in the government pro uh, programs. It's definitely, it's get into the government programs, check them out, see what's out there. See if you can get government assistance. You pay into it every paycheck you get. You've been getting paid since you were 15 years old. I I can't stand the notion of I get paid too much for government assistance. I don't quote me, but I believe Tom Brady got government assistance in like 2020 or something. Tom fucking Brady. Shit, I'm not even sure. I think Donald Trump got government assistance at one point. Actually, I think it was like monetary, like you know, it was uh, the banks. But they had to get this. They had to figure this shit out. They're like, "Yo, this guy, this guy." So I think the bank came up. So that would be the feds came up with a strategy on how they were going to help him lower some of this debt that he leveraged. You know, so, you know, when people say things like, ah, I make too much to get government assistance. Have you looked? Have you applied? Because even when you apply, you can go into that government office because you're going to get an interview. You know, when you sit down at that interview, I mean, we, we a lot of us have done it. Um, That's when you pull out your savings, your retirement, your bills. And it's like, look, this is what it looks like. They do what they do. They'll get back to you. And then that shit just starts coming in once a month. Like, boom, boom. And you over there, let me, hey, sweetheart, I know this ain't right. I know it ain't right. But let's get scallions tonight. You know, it's like, woo, we're getting scallions tonight. Our scouts. <laughs> With some scallions. You know, we good. We good. And what you want to put with them scallops? I don't know. I'm thinking I'm a little grade A5 Wagyu. Oh, you know, Costco's got Wagyu now. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it ain't right. But, you know, you're like, you know what? 
shit, for the last two years, been struggling. Last four months, struggling. Six months, struggling. 90 days, struggling. Why not? You know? So just thinking of different things, thinking of government assistance, thinking of loans that I could probably get from the bank. But the loans are going to be what? 9.57%. I looked. I was like, wait a minute. Damn. Come on, man. 9, 10% on a loan? That lets you know right now, either everyone's getting a loan or no one's getting a loan right now. Like, I, I'm trying to think. To put it at 10, I mean, I, I get the Fed interest rate and everything. Everybody knows. Everybody's hip these days. We ain't just walking around. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knows it's 7 something, 7.2 7 or something like that. You know, and to get hit with a 9.2 or something, it, it makes you want it. Like, okay. So, yeah, we know the banks are getting hit. Uh, man, this is simple economics. Um, the banks are getting hit with that rate. That means... That means everybody's living on credit because they're hitting them with. If if you knew that somebody was getting 7%, like, for example, you know, I always like to talk to my trap stars. If you knew your plug, the price that they were getting it at, how much markup would you be willing to put on top of that? You know what I'm saying? If we all know it's like 7% right now, 7 point something. And we're like, okay, you can increase it by 2%. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I'm sure some people, if your credit score is starting to look like mine's, shit, we're going to get hit with that 4%. You know? It's like, gosh. You know, it's like, we know you need this loan. We heard you lost your spouse. We heard you lost your wife. We heard you lost your job. (laughs) You going, and I'm like, I do need that loan just for a couple more months. I know something's going to break through. You know? It's like, okay, well, if you only need it for a couple of months, then that 9% interest shouldn't bother you. You know, it's like, well, motherfucker, we know how this really goes. That 24-month loan going to turn into a 72-month loan. <laughs> I'm paying for that shit till I'm 72. Like, shit, y'all doubled your money and oh, more than that. You know, so just going over different strategies of how to approach this. Um, one. I'm about to possibly be taking public transportation, you know, even just to go around the corner. I'm like, man, let me just, let me pay this dollar or something. I don't even know what it is right now. It's probably like $2. I meant to take my uh, little ones on the, they, they, they go, you know what I'm saying? They get so excited. Uh, I'm like, yo, we can keep doing it. Cause actually they went with like their school or something and they were like, oh, it's so cool. We got to write the, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, yeah. That's so cool. So I say we can keep, yeah, we can do it sometimes. You know, you just want to ride up to somebody's house and we'll just take the bus, you know. Um, So public transportation is a thing on my mind right now. And I know people are like, no, man, you can't do it. You can't do it, Chan. Like, (laughs) Chan, you were one selfish motherfucker, man. Like, yeah, this would be, (laughs) Chan, you are so selfish. You could cut your cell phone off. You, minus, I do my conversations on, uh, my cell phone you could cut your cell phone off you could cut your car note off you know what i'm saying yeah go ahead you could and you'd be fine you're like yo y'all want to find me y'all know where i'm at i'm a pretty pretty basic guy you know you really want to find me you know where chan's at you know same old same old he likes to hit that spot and he goes to that spot and he goes there sometimes he's there sometimes you know (laughs) i economically i have kind of not not even I am getting 36, so sometimes traveling, you know, an hour to go to a party, hanging out at the party to drive an hour back or hour and a half or something, can't start getting to you. You know, my eyes ain't, them blinks are getting a little bit longer and longer every time. <laughs> like, well, man. You know, um, but um, economically, I started thinking, I live in a melting pot, you know, out here in the DMV, but the DMV it's exactly that. It's not the DMV. It's the DMV. I mean, they separate shit around here. So as much as it's a melting pot, you come out here, you walk around, you're all like, oh, shit, this is really diverse. You can see black people. You can see, you know, whatever, you know, what you think, you know, is another co- Nigerian or Jamaican and Germans and Jewish and Asian and 
you know, different parts of Africa, different parts of the Caribbean, Virgin Islands, you know, it's like you, you get all that experience, but what happens? What happens at the end of the day, in which I am noticing a slight change recently, probably over the last two years. What did we notice recently? I mean, what, did, what was going on? At the end of the day, when businesses shut down, you know, everything shut down, everybody like ran to their, cor- their corner of the world or their the DMV, scatter. You know what I'm saying? And, and don't let me, you know, black. And you can kind of even see it on the road and on the trains. You know what I'm saying? It's like maybe when you're in an area like, I don't know, Alexandria or something, you see everybody on the train. But as soon as those stops start hitting, <laughs> you know, then you start seeing, you know, red line come up. It's like, oh, there goes all the whites and all the Asians. You know, then here comes orange line. Oh, here come all the blacks and the Latinos, you know. So you, you can kind of even see it even on the road or or I don't know, when you're going north and south, everybody heads south, you know, to D.C. for work. Uh, but you'll see who's heading northeast or whatever, northwest, you know, on at 5 p.m. when the day's over and everything. So, But one thing I'm noticing recently is that couple that you saw at the Giant or at the Shell gas station or at work, you know, you're starting to notice them in the neighborhood now. I started to notice this, which was, I'm like, okay, this is a different economic thing. It's like a reverse, um, uh, I don't know, uh, I hate to say it, white flight or Asian flight or whatever it is, you know, it's like a reverse. It's like, oh, wait, so you, I stuck around it. See, I've been to other neighborhoods where when shit kind of started tanking, it, the neighborhood just kind of tanked with it. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm living in an area right now where there was a, a decrease in certain populations, demographics, and it went up. <laughs> and it went up. That lets you know how many people are riding on those 2 3% loans and whatnot, and they're not paying their bills. They're like, man, we can get more interest. And we got people who are paying their bills on time. You know? So... It went up, and now I'm watching people come back. It's kind of like you see those little things that you know those prairie dogs, and you see them poke their head out. Oh, well, look at those, look at those blacks. They are actually, they're actually keeping Prince George's County in order. Matter of fact, it looks cleaner. Oh, the MGM just moved in. Maryland Live just moved in. <laughs> Property value is going up. <laughs> what did we do, honey? What did we do? Yeah, we should have just stayed. I mean, <laughs> we're going back. We're not going to let them have this property. Who do they think they are? Just moving in. Because before Prince George's County, I would say was probably still 60% Caucasian till I would say like 2001, 2002. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sure when kind of the transition happened exactly. It could have been earlier than that. You got to talk to the real natives. Like I'm not a real native. I'm originally from Kansas. You know what I'm saying? So you got to talk to the natives who can say like, oh, yeah, I remember the whole cycle, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's way off topic. But uh, yeah, so just thinking of different things. One thing uh, with writing up some numbers, again, I was kind of discussing the different sets of like, like, like a squirrel has acorns. And I'm pretty sure a squirrel is smart enough to not put all of his acorns in one, I don't know, tree or something. You know, um, I'm pretty sure that squirrel spreads them out. I'm pretty sure the squirrel even has, you know, lawyer money, you know, robber money. (laughs) He's like, oh, man, you know that that bird, fucking bird loves my acorns. All right, here, I'm going to put all my nasty acorns right here. I'm going to put all my good ones. (laughs) So that bird just comes over there. Give me your fucking acorns. You know? and he's like, ah, fine, take them. You got to put up a little fight. You can't you can't just give it to them. You got to be like, no, fuck you. Fuck you. And then they got to be like, no, nah, fuck. And then you got to give it to them. You know what I'm saying? Before it gets too much. Don't escalate it too much, but also don't let it make it too easy. You know? <laughs> then they're going to be like, why was that so easy? You know? So um, that's kind of how it is with the bunches of money. It, it sounds crazy. So, so wait, 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 you're telling me that I'm, I'm going to take these funds and I'm going to split these funds up. And yes, you're going to split them up. 
but there's different plans for each bucket. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not saying spread out too thin. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know when that point is. But also, for example, um, let's just say, just say a couple counts, just real quick. Just not saying that not, this is not advice or anything. Let's say we have long term savings, mid term savings. Fuck it. I don't give a fuck. If there's a dollar left in there, I'm spinning this bitch. You know, like you, you got, okay, long term savings. What does long term savings mean? It depends on your life. Me, long term, I told you, I kind of go over, I've discussed it earlier. Long term means, uh, this is not retirement. Long term, pretty much don't touch this shit until your golden years. Okay, not retirement. Not, but pretty much if you can, just keep contributing to this shit. Trust me, your AC is going to blow. Your refrigerator is going to blow. Your washer and dryer are going to start. Digga, 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 digga. You know, what the fuck is that sound? Your washing machine about to blow. <laughs> like, you know, whatever it is. Car is going to have maintenance. Somebody's going to get sick. You know, um, and am I following these rules? Hell no right now. I have completely f- fell off the wagon or I'm on the wagon, whatever you want to call it. Um, try, this is try not to touch like 10 years. Okay. We can, we can reevaluate and, and every year, I guess, you know, every six months, of course, reevaluate it. But this is like long term. We, one day we may want to buy a house or we may want to relocate and get a bigger house or a smaller house or whatever it is, or start renting. We never know what, what, you know, it's going to revolve in our life. So let's just try to, you know, leave that long term. Let's put, let's put 10 years on it or something. Check it every year, check it every six months. And it can be in the same bank account, but are we doing too much? Are we contributing to it too much? Are we, are we not doing enough with it? Should we be putting that long term money to some type of use? Should it be in a CD or money market account or, could we even put it in the U.S. Treasury, you know, um, c- kind of try to figure that out and just hold to maturity. Don't even I mean, if it makes a profit, hey, take it. But, you know, hold to maturity. Don't set it. Forget it. Put a put a put a 10 year interest rate on it, even if it's just ten thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? The only thing about the 10 year thing is that shit's going to be locked up. And then if you do. I'm talking about the U.S. Treasury. If you do take a loss, you're going to be blown. So, I mean, you may not want to do 10 years. Maybe, again, if you want, just put in. This is not advice either. Put it in a year. But just every year it matures. Then, you know what I'm saying, you could just put it back in another year one. And if you get to a point where you're like, yo, honey, I don't, or sweetheart, or family, or myself, or, or pooch, I don't think we're going to need this for another two years, then go ahead. Put it in a two-year note or a treasury or whatever. Um, that's long-term, okay? Essentially, if ain't nobody died, we good, okay? With fondling with that. Um, uh, midterm is more so, in my personal opinion, uh, current, things that are going on currently, um, on top of late fees, on top of credit cards, um, can start building this up, but, uh, you know, tr- tr- you know, this is, this is not, you know, this, this is some short term shit come up. Oh, you forgot a Macy's credit card that you didn't, um, pay for when you open it up in college and that shit just pops up while you're trying to I don't know, do something else. You're like, oh, I forgot about that Sears gift card. Shit, is Sears even still in business? Say, so, oh shit. Okay, yeah. Let me let me go ahead and take care of all that medical bill, that uh hospital bill that's like oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. Damn it. Shit, can that shit even get written off your credit score now? Do I need to pay it? You know, <laughs> like maybe how long has it been? Shit, it's about to be seven years. I think I'm gonna go ahead and let it ride. <laughs> Uh, so I ain't paying on it yet, so may may have to just take that loss on the credit score real quick, and then we'll bounce back from that. You know, um, I don't know what it would do. Um, you know, I I could see that. 
you know what I'm saying? Oh, one month, I kind of forgot to pay that car note, shit, got to double up. Okay. You know, but, you know, if if possible, this is midterm. We try not to touch it, you know, ex- except maybe every, you know, year when you do that year evaluation of the long-term money, this is the time you do the year evaluation of the midterm, and you kind of, kind of can pluck from it a little bit, you know, oh, okay, okay crap, uh, what is this money sitting in, um, mm, save, of course, savings, again, money market, it's probably not in a CD, uh, it's, cause this, this has to be a little bit, a little bit more liquider, um, uh, and, and by liquid, I mean, uh, I'm sure you understand, uh, means I, I, more access to it. How hard is it going to get me to get whatever it is into cash? So I would hate for someone to put this in like a stock, but let's say, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm, with your order types, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you have your, your, um, your sell stop in, you know what I'm saying? If you put it in something long, you know what I'm saying? Something you're like, I'm going to put this shit in, um, I don't know, a NVIDIA or, I don't know, uh, you know, I mean, I guess you could always say just like an Amazon or something or Google, but that, you know, that's not even, that's not even, uh, you know, guaranteed. Um, but you put it, you know, you, you diversify it among some stocks um, if you wanted to. But make sure those, you would have to make sure those sell stops are in. And not to mention, you want to make sure that your positions are covered as well. You know what I'm saying? Just in case anything happens. Um, and you have that, then possibly you may be able to use the, the midterm account for... Um, for possible trading. Cause again, the thing is something pops up. How long do you want this money to take to turn into cash? So, you know what I'm saying? Like, for example, you, you could do a mutual fund if you wanted to mutual funds have higher expense ratios. So you don't want to put all your money in a long term, you know, in a mutual fund forever. I mean, I guess as long as your capital gains are exceeding your expense ratio and you don't really mind, you're just kind of like, you know what, I don't care. I've held this Fidelity or Charles Schwab or whatever mutual fund for, you know, years. And it's always seemed to do me well. And I am okay with paying the 1% interest on it. If there's anything wrong with it, won't the F- uh, SEC or FINRA find out about it and find them or something? And it's like, yeah, 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 you, yeah. So if you want to leave in that mutual fund, think about the mutual fund is if you don't hold it for the period of time that you should like let's say it's like 180 days or something then you can get hit with like a i don't know 100 100 or you'd have to talk to you had to figure out from the bd but it could be probably like a 100 150 dollar fine or a penalty you know what i'm saying so you just want to keep that in mind but if you're like hey again this is midterm you know i'm not supposed to be using this for like you know six months to a year so it's 180 days then that penalty won't matter so you know and then definitely uh, I can see ETF. See the the midterm is again. You're gonna have more flexibility with that. Uh, and then the, you know, I don't I don't really give it a crap. You know, what I'm saying if it has two dollars in it, I'm spending it. That's just that's just you you know whatever. That's just whatever. You know, what I'm saying whatever you want. That's that. You know what? Whatever. You know, if there's is if there's money in there, you spend it. You know what I'm saying? This is, and this is separate from like retirement. You know what I'm saying? Retirement is something else. Retirement is from the age I retire to the time I transition. If I don't ever get another job, I can live off of this account right here. You know, so from age, you retire at age 72 all the way up until I, I use the number 120. Because uh, it's just, you know, it's just a safe number. Uh, so, uh, among that, thinking of the different things, um, now what's happened in reality, uh, that long-term savings account 
ended up getting used to fund my uh, times hanging out, uh, ended up finding me paying off my credit card and running it back up again. <laughs> this is what has happened in real life. But when things get on track, um, and I, and it's not, it's not healthy to work alone. A man's not supposed to work alone, but with working alone, I'll, I'll be able to implement those strategies a little bit better, you know, um, you know, sitting down, uh, working on it. I did lose track before I'd be trying to work on a budget and it just wasn't working right. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you know, it's not easy to implement, you know, strategies when it comes to finances and budgeting into the family. So it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't go so well and, and I'm not blaming anybody. It could also be my presentation. You know, I could be horrible at communicating. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, another, another way you could describe those accounts, you could also say current bills, late bills, and then, you know, whatever, you know, the whatever account, uh, and the whatever account is probably a checking account is probably a cryptocurrency you know what I'm saying? With cryptocurrency, it trades real time all day, every day. So you could put all this money in a in a Coinbase or a Cash App or, or whatever they call it, Block or um, whatever those companies are. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you could put it in there, let it trade real time, uh, get your notifications, make sure you, if your cryptocurrency platform allows it, set your, set your trailing stops, you know what I'm saying? And then... Uh, you go about your day and when it, wherever you are, hey, do you accept Bitcoin? Hey, uh, here, just give me one second. And because it's real time, you can um, sell out. Uh, then you can transfer to your checking account and then boom, boom, boom. So that's, that's just straight, you know, <laughs> just whatever. But uh, so, yeah. Um, so on the other note, uh, getting, getting, getting the bills, getting everything written up, the expenses right now, there is no income. Income is an easy number. It's zero dot zero zero. Um, and you can put how many ever zeros you want to put after that. Um, but I'm getting the expenses written down and now I have to develop strategies in order of how am I going to take care of this? It's easy just to, I've stated this already, it's easy just to say, I make too much money, you know what I'm saying? Or it's easy just to say, I'm just going to use my income to take care of all things. I, ha I have a job. I should be able to do this. It's easy. It, essentially, if you take, like, um, let's take a, 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 a triangle and have the acute end pointing to the left and the obtuse and pointing to the right and that bottom line like, like a bond uh a bond thing there's yield um i can't even remember was it current yield yield to maturity yield to par or something like that i gotta get my notes out okay that's essentially kind of like like accounts and don't quote me this is not advice accounts if I set up auto debit, you know what I'm saying? Accounts if I don't look up any programs or government assistance. Accounts if I uh, get into it specifically and identify where my money's going, how, what programs are out there that can help me, um, you know, and you're in there. You know what I'm saying? Um because let's say auto debit. Auto debit is great. I love it. It's easy on the mind. But how do we know sometimes that there might not be an opportunity to have possibly saved more money? And don't quote me if that auto debit wasn't set up. I've noticed sometimes in my personal life, the auto debit was set up at a particular time. It only happens like once or twice a year. I've noticed it. Where... Um, what, what happened? Um, 
uh, the auto debit was going to come through, but uh, the bill wasn't necessarily due or something. Like the bill could actually be paid like a week later or something, or like two weeks later, you know? So I could cancel the auto debit on that, keep the money, and then, uh, you know, put the auto debit back with the same date, if that's okay. Um, and then just go ahead and pay it a couple weeks later when another paycheck come in. And that, and that check that I got is now sitting in my savings account trying to figure out what to do with it. Like, oh, snap, that was crazy how I got around that. You know, uh, you have to look at the bills and, and you have to look at the dates, uh, due dates, late fees, grace periods, cutoff periods, reinstatement fees. You look up all these. Here, let me see. Here, I just threw out a bunch of dates. Uh, let me. OK, so you have and if you know, we're not even talking about credit cards, which has a statement balance date. Statement balance date with a credit card essentially just means the date that the credit card is going to be cut. You could play around with it if you wanted to. Like, for example, try to, like, get the credit card down before the statement balance date is cut and then run it up on the day after. If you know you got to make, like, a major purchase, like, don't make the major purchase right before the statement balance cut date. And then now for the the rest of these, I think it's pretty much uh, regular. Um, you got your due date. So a credit card has a statement balance date and a due date. So... The re- and then all your other bills pretty much due dates. So your due date is pretty standard. If we look up these terms, which this is what I'm supposed to be doing on BARF, we can understand uh, kind of the word due. I don't know. It just means you got to do it. All right. Due date. This is the due date. Um, then you have grace period. The thing about grace period is you want to know the interest. And I know it's like, well, it's not interest. It's a dollar amount. Well, how take that dollar amount and divide it by your bill and that will let you know how much interest you're getting hit with so if you have a 150 dollar bill and on the during the grace period the grace period is five days and you're going to get hit with a 15 dollar bill you're getting essentially hit with what's that 10 uh, percent you know so that and you'll in your time is is your your time you don't have enough time you know uh but let's say you have another bill that has a like, you know, a eight cent, you know, something ridiculous. And um you know, that's zero percent uh you know of your bill. Your bill's eighty dollars, but if you know it has a sixteen day grace period and after sixteen days you get hit with like eight cents, you know, I guess or something, you could say, you know what? That one, I can kind of, you know what I'm saying? That's the grace period. You can mess around with the grace period. No, the bills, you can't mess around with that grace period. That, that has a three-day grace period. That ain't no grace. That one has a 16-day grace period. Okay, that's fantastic. And they have a lower interest rate um, than that one. So let's not play with that one. Um, don't play with it. Don't play with it. If you want to put that one, possibly, possibly, just, you know, that's something we don't want to play with. Um... So you got due date, grace period, then you got late fee. Late fee is the day when that grace period is over. So if you don't pay the day before, if the if the late fee is on the 16th, you know what I'm saying, the bill is due on the 1st, you know what I'm saying, uh, so essentially you got 16 days to get the bill paid or you're going to get hit with the late fee. Then you want to pay on the 15th. Just make sure you get that money in on the 15th. No late fee. Now, again, going back to the late fee. If, again, if that late fee is, I don't know, pennies, you know, it's eight cents. If, you don't, you know, you can go, shit, let's say it's eight cents a day. Eight cents times 14, you know what I'm saying? Um, let me see. Eight cents times 14. A dollar 12. So in two weeks, if you pay this bill in two weeks, I had to just put up a dollar twelve. The bill is like eighty dollars or something. Divide one twelve. Um we can do it on the counter. Oh no, no. I'm sorry. Um uh but uh essentially that's one point four. I 
I forget how the one twelve song goes. Not that was that sounded like Shaggy. Uh, that's not what I was trying to say. Uh, uh, oh, I can't remember. Peaches and cream. Um, but yeah. Um, so you said, oh yeah, that 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 bill is one point four percent, and it gives us fourteen days. So you know what? We're gonna go ahead, and possibly. You know, not don't always try to pay your bills and stay ahead of them. Okay, not saying play with grace periods and late fees because what happens with that is when you go to purchase things and you know you're just like, oh man, yeah, what's up? I'm trying to get a car, or a house, or something. You know, they want to look at okay, do you have, you know, a great payment history? You know what I'm saying? So you don't really want to play with all this stuff. And, but if you get in a situation where it's beneficial, it's like, hey, you know what? Maybe you don't really care. Maybe you're like, yo, they can play with me if they want to, but I'm going to get what I want. So, you know, they you, you don't really care if they run your credit or whatever and see a couple late fees or late payments or whatever. That doesn't really bother you. You're like, I'll, I'll make sure I get my credit score up before whatever. We make a purchase or whatever, however you want it. Or on the other end, when we're all sometimes in a bind, you know, we're kind of just making it through. I always say rich people and poor people are the same. We're all the same. We're 98% the same. It's just how people go approach it. You know what I'm saying? Rich people, I don't know what a definition of my definition of rich is right now, but to an extent, let's say I always talk about the electricity bill. You know what I'm saying? I just use the electricity bill as an example because that's one thing I think people, if you grew up in Chicago or something or, or something, you know what I'm saying, and you deal with those winters, you know what I'm saying, you just, you just want some heat and electricity on or whatever, and right now you're running a little bit short. Sometimes I've I have not experienced it uh, in my childhood, but I've heard people say that my parents got a bill in my name, you know, and they they screwed me. <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not making fun. I'm not laughing about it, but it's like damn, you know. So they're now they're 30, trying to get their first credit card or first car, and they have like a 400, and they have no idea what happened. They're like, no, I don't got no credit cards or anything, nothing. You know what I'm saying? I should have like a zero, you know. And it's like, nah, it looks like you have this, I don't know, BG and E or something, you know. So um um on the other end, let's say you're a person who can put that bill on auto debit. You put, you know, you multiply the bill by twelve, you put a year's worth of the bill in, you know what I'm saying, um your your son or daughter's name, you know what I'm saying? And they say, you know, when they turn 18, you open up a credit card for them and shred it. You know, they don't even know it. Now, they turn 30, and they, like, got an 820. And they're like, yo, what the hell? So, you know, you got perfect payment history. It looks like you've been paying on your bills on time. Uh, what I say, yo, I have no bills. Like, you, you don't have uh, a Bank of America, Wells Fargo credit card. It's like, not that I know. And you also have this bill, electricity bill you've been paying. You got perfect payment history on it. And they're like, oh shit, I'll t- I'll take it. What is it? What what I got? Seven forty? Oh, seven twenty? I'll take it. Because at the same time, they have no notes, no, you know, what I'm saying. Now when they go to get a loan, boom, boom. Thank you, thank you, so much. So I've always stated that there's not really much difference between, you know, I guess, for lack of better words, rich people and poor people. It's just more so how it all gets implemented. So, again, playing around with the, you know, the due dates. The uh, uh, the grace periods, the late fees, um, it can it can benefit on one end where it's like, hey, this bill is how much this month? Five hundred dollars? Oh snap! Uh, it's not even like, you know what I'm saying? Like the lo- it's a low interest rate, and I could actually not pay it on the fifteenth. Um, we can keep that that paycheck, you know what I'm saying? And then uh pay it pay it on the next paycheck when it comes in and trust me it'll be taken care of and uh we may be able to save a whole paycheck or something you know what i'm saying you, you'll you figure it out you know what i'm saying when more so when you got the money coming in you can play around and you don't really you're in your house you're in your car you don't really care about the credit scores or whatever and I'm, this is not i'm not recommending this or anything at all um and then on the other end if you're kind of struggling you can kind of say oh snap Okay, how are we going to work this out? How are we going to make, we got four or $5,000 in debt, and we got about $2,500 coming in. How are we going to freak this? 
All right. And stay on top of everything. Stay on top of it all. Your brain can go crazy, stressed out, heart attack, hypertension. Don't don't allow that at all. Don't allow it at all. Because on the other end, you got to remember, you're dealing with major corporations. They're okay. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't let them stress you out. They have collection agencies. They got forgiveness programs. They ain't going to advertise this shit because you got low lives out there and scam artists who would say, oh, well, then I'm just going to pull out a loan, not pay for seven years, claim bankruptcy. And then, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna, so they don't, they don't want that, you know, to be, I guess, advertised. They, they know what they got behind the closed doors, but we don't know what they have available. So we're sitting there stressed out, hair falling out, heart all bad, you know, <laughs> bottle in the hand. Just, oh, oh, <laughs> you know, I give up. <laughs> it's like over visa trust me visa is going to be okay if they don't get your fourteen thousand dollar credit card that you ran up and what was you doing anyway you know <laughs> like don't stress out about it make it fun you know it's fun what's more important besides business and finance and all this shit is your your interaction socially your intimacy your exercise your uh your uh hobbies you know what I'm saying? That's the shit that's important. This, this Now, I would consider finances very important as well. You know what I'm saying? But it's, 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 it's a, I would say it's a slither of the pie that's not the largest, but it's a slither of the pie that kind of has to be there. It has to be there. Kind of like I, I'm going to compare it to sex in a relationship. I'm not a relationship person. I would say sex is not... I'm not saying it's great, not great or not. No, no it's, it's it's awesome, but I would say it's not the biggest slither of the the relationship pie. However, if that slither's not there, <laughs> that pie, I'm not eating that pie. I'm uh, not nah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? But when you're really in a relationship with somebody, authentically, you know what I'm saying? Not the, you know what I'm saying like long term whatever how you want to say it there could be times when sex is not you know on the forefront you know what i'm saying it could be it could be i don't know you could really just have be having a great time going through life taking your walks you know uh cleaning the kitchen sitting down watching tv you know you're just really enjoying hearing about each other's day and you do that for a little while and you know and, and and not saying you're not having sex, but it's not becoming this like, I guess like where it's like fifty percent of the pie, you know what I'm saying? Where a lot of sometimes it can seem like in a lot of relationships, or at least a lot of people present it when they're presenting themselves. You know, if you're at the, you know, the lounges or even the job and or whatever it is, and people just want to present themselves as, oh man, you know what I'm saying? I need to get some ass, 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 you know. <laughs> You know, so, but, you know, man, sometimes when you have a best friend, you know, the best thing that you can ever do for them, just tell them the truth. Like, that's the best part of a relationship. Fuck all that. As, 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 you know, that too. But just having someone loyal to tell the truth and, you know what I'm saying, that you, like, that's more beautiful than anything, you know, and then all the other factors and whatnot. That's my personal opinion. But um, on the other end, um, so then we went over definitely. No, oh, not we went over, but I'm just kind of discussing. Uh, there's a statement balance with credit cards, but uh, all the rest of them, I don't know. You know when they're when they get cut, like electricity. Like I get you would have to figure it out. What day do they cut the electricity? Or whatever. Not cut it off, but like do they cut the bill? Like okay, every month on this date is when they take this many kilowatts that we used or whatever. So, uh, statement balance date, due date, grace period dates, uh, late fee, and then there's cutoff. It's like, okay, I see you've been saving up a lot of money. You saved about $1,500 not paying the bill, okay? And you ran it up, the late fees up to about $30, $40, $50 now. Now it's starting, you know, okay. All right, we get you. You did your thing. All right, you saved some money. Now, we're about to get the shit cut off. <laughs> They're about to cut the water off. They're about to cut the electricity off, the gas off, whatever it is. The heating and 
an error. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, all right, can you stop playing? You know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, my bad. I just got caught up in NCAA football, whatever. I, you know, whatever. And then it's, you know, that's when it's like, okay. Uh, on the other end, uh, it's like, okay, y'all, we're about to get cut off, okay? It's about to happen. It's like, no. <laughs> it's like, no, there's no choice. It's going to happen. But it's only after you hit the cutoff. Then you're going to have to go into the reinstatement fee. It's only a $20 reinstatement fee. And then by that date, I can get it cut back on. And we'll just have to wait about three to five days before it be cut back on. And it's like, oh, we're not going to get whatever it is until about the 5th or the 6th. Now you got everybody watching you. Mm. Spectating. I can't stand spectators. But I got to get better at understanding spectators because like, so, someone recently told me that, yo, you always going to have spectators. Always. There's always going to be somebody spectating. And it's tough sometimes when it's the people closest to you. Because you're just like, oh, man, they're right. everybody's watching. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, they're going to see. Okay, you said you're going to wait for your next check. Boom. You said when you get that check, you're going to, first day, you're going to pay the bill. Boom. You're going to pay the reinstatement fee. Boom. Late fees. Boom. And then you're going to... uh it's going to take them a couple of days to cut it back on. So it should be, it's going to be on by this date. Right, Ma? Right, Dad? It's like, yes, we're going to have the heat or the air or whatever. So it's just important to know all these dates. You know, not just kind of just, bah, you know, kind of throw it in a whim. You know, for multiple different reasons of when it comes to managing the finances. You know what I'm saying? Multiple, you know what I'm saying? Whether it is to just put extra money in the savings account because you, Saw a little cheat, a little loop, you know, uh, or whether it's like, yo, survival, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be like, yo, I see my, I see my people's, and that's why it's so important to have people sit down as a family to, to discuss, you know, financial literacy and everything. Cause it's like, yo, I see my people's do so many things like, because the, I think one way people end up in paycheck to paycheck is because they're not paying attention to dates or anything. They're just so used to their, I could be wrong, but I would say their math is more so not trying to exclude that, that math. I think that gets people into paycheck to paycheck is this is how much money I bring in. This is how much I have in expenses. This is the, all my due dates. You know what I'm saying? Don't even consider grace period dates. Don't even consider, um, uh, the late fees, the, uh, you know, the cutoff, the, you know, don't even consider it. Don't even think about it. They just say, I pay on my due date every month. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that there's not people who do that and they do very well for themselves. And that's, I mean, that's the point we want to get to. You know what I'm saying? It's it's kind of like in your head, it's kind of laissez-faire a little bit. It's just like on my due date, boom, I do it. Boom, 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 boom. You know, and I think sometimes it works out for a lot of people who are very successful because they just take all their savings. They take 50% of their savings, put it in their bank account. They're very successful. Then on the other end, I think it, it's kind of a trap for people because um, they're not aware of anything that's going on. They're just paying their bills. Boom, boom, boom. And if they ever get set behind, then boom. It's like, whoa, got set behind. You know, $600 bill came in or something. You know what I'm saying? And... They're they're so you they're on such a track they're on such a course. It's not that they're not making a lot of money, but that's one thing. That's I would say that's the concept of I just need to make more money. I just need to make more money. You know what I'm saying? And now you're in this cycle of trying to make more money so that you can maintain a lifestyle, which is your house, your car, uh, family events every weekend, um, traveling two times a year. You know what I'm saying? And you kind of get, on the other end, let's say you have a person who, you know, is, you know, brings in a lot of uh, money, pays the expenses, um, puts 50% towards savings. Sometimes they can get caught up in a system where they put all their money in savings because they're so focused. They're like, oh, I'm good. Put all their money in savings. They have, they have. $50,000, $70,000 
sitting in savings since they were 20 something. They were a nurse, a doctor, a lawyer or something. Worked for a major firm for a while. Brought in a couple hundred thousand dollars. Bills was only, you know what I'm saying, regular. They got a, they had a roommate. They got a house together. They weren't paying like 500 a month in rent. You know what I'm saying? So they're taking all their money, just putting it in savings. Just putting it in savings. Not even thinking about it. Just sitting on the couch, watching TV. You know? And they're chilling. Sometimes they can get caught up in another cycle, which is they get older and they have millions of dollars to give to their families. They're like, hey, I gave my family millions of dollars. But at no point did that money ever. Now, unless it's religious reasons or whatever, some people don't. I, th- I believe some people don't believe making money off of money. But that money could have easily, easily been even in a... <laughs> Uh, 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 it could have been in a U.S. Treasury bond, you know, it could have been in anything. I mean, a CD, you know, money market account. Hopefully, at least it's in the money market account. But it could have been in anything and could have just simply brought in. Because you also got to remember last thing real quick uh, before, because uh, there's one more thing I think I want to touch on. You also got to remember um, annual inflation and, and consumer price, uh, yeah, consumer price inflation, it, the rise of interest rates, different things like this. And sometimes people can be just so used to just due date, pay. This is what the number is, pay. I got the money, pay. The, I think sometimes with this personality, I could be wrong. The last thing they want to hear is that they can't afford it. You know, it's kind of like you can't afford it. No, there's no way. I pay everything on time, you know, um, and it's like, man, I don't think you can afford it, sir. I don't think you can afford it. You can't tell me what I can't afford. Do you know who I am? I'm a lawyer and I work for Furman, German and Tormen. It's like, okay, okay. I, all right. All right. <laughs> okay. You know, so, um, sometimes it's like, do you want to take these funds and invest possibly in a portfolio? We could even do a pre-made portfolio. It's like, no, that stuff doesn't it lose money. It's like, yes, but you're also losing money. <laughs> you don't see it. It's like, I don't see it. What are you talking about? And then you got to kind of go into a lot of banks. One of their bare minimum rules is rule 72. Now, don't quote me. I can't remember it off the top of my head. I got to look it up. But essentially, I think if you take your money and divide it by 72 or something, I got to look it up that that's the amount of time it's going to take in your investment to double. Okay, so you're receiving, you know, one hundred thousand dollars or whatever. It's in your account. Let's go ahead. Divide it by seven. Here, let me see. Is that what it is? Let me see real quick. And this is a basic rule. Uh, Let's say one hundred thousand dollars divided by 72. Oh, okay, let me see. Let me look at it, see if I can look at it real quick. Rule 72. Oh, 72 divided by the rate of return. Okay, so the rate of return. So, all right, the rate of return in the savings account is 0. 0.00. Let's even just do 0, 0, 001. All right, um, 72 divided by 0. 0, 0.001. There's no way. Is that correct? What in the world? It would take 72,000... 72,000 what? Uh, 72,000 years? Am I doing that correctly? Wow. So essentially you could just say... You can forget it. Let me do 72 divided by 1. It would take what? 72 years? Is it the amount of how do you how do you want? Can I see is it, yeah, it's the amount of years. Yeah. Wow. So you, you know what I'm saying? So you had a hundred thousand dollars in there, and it's gonna take you seventy two thousand years to get that money to double, you know, to do anything. When easily you could have possibly found, you know, let's say you found a, a US Treasury at even two percent. 
Let's do point zero two. At least that takes it down to uh, thirty six hundred months. I mean thirty six hundred years. You know, to get that money to double. If if I'm doing the math correctly, I'm not even sure if I'm doing it correctly. Um. So sometimes I think they can get caught up in that cycle a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, everybody's not perfect, neither am I. Um, last thing. Um, so, touched on how I uh, was going to try to bring in approximately 500, I think it was like $540,000 a month, right? I don't know how, but I got to figure out something. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to work on scaling up. Okay. We always talk about how we want to make 600, I mean, sorry, six figures a year. Six figures a year. We always do this to ourselves, me included. Not saying everyone, but there's nothing wrong with making six figures a month. There's nothing wrong with making seven figures a year. Why why do we not say I want to make seven figures a year? Not not you, but me. Like, why do I not say? What's wrong with wanting to make seven figures in a year? You know, so I want to try to get to that point in my mind of how to get to that point. And then on the other end, got to start figuring out how ways that I'm going to do that. What opportunities bring in seven figures a year? And I know doctor, probably lawyer, athlete. You know, these people can bring in seven figures a year. You know, not saying all athletes, but, you know. Um, so what am I going to do to kind of switch up my situation? One thing I saw is the nine to five is not going to work for me as well. Unless they're going to give me a $300,000 a month job, which I'm not the CEO. I'm not going to be right under the CEO. So I'm, I I can't see that happen. I don't even think I'm, I, well, actually, you know, I am capable of being CEO. I'm capable. I'm going to stop. You know, I, I got to, you know, take a training from Marco Hedgy. I think he's a CEO to CEO trainer, you know, I'll take one of his classes or something. Um, but I got to figure out in my simple corner of the world, my small corner of the world, what am I going to do to get my income up to be able to get seven figures a year? And I just have to start thinking like that. So uh, I'm working on the podcast, conversation I'm having, you know, how am I going to increase that? Working on a possible book coming out, how am I going to increase that to, let's say they always say, look, if you get a million copies of the book, and sell each of them for a dollar more than you bought it for, and you sell a million copies, then you got a million dollars right there. Or if you can get a million subscribers or whatever, and they all give you one dollar, then you got a million dollars right there. And if you can keep doing that and doing that over and over, so let's say for 30 years, you should be able to retire. So these are just a few things that I'm thinking about, a few things I'm going to be working on. Um, please. Um, support uh, House of Barf uh, any support you give will sustain future episodes um, also uh, please support Link, the book I have coming out uh, Links and Make Sense Cooler Made Stand Adventure by yours truly uh, coming late 2023 uh, hope, uh, hopefully uh, no it will it will but I'm working with a team of people it's not just me this is a short story of a young boy named Langston Mason, his imaginary best friend Zonky, a pink elephant, and what fun they are having learning about money or running a Kulame stand. So I want to thank anybody and everybody who decided to stop by and kick it with your man Chan. I appreciate it. I'm Chan. This is House of Barf.